and welcome to Crumbs and Doilies in Soho, where today I am going to be sharing with you one of my absolute essential recipes. You need to have this in your repertoire. It's going to come in really, really handy and it's the best chocolate rollout cookie you're ever, ever going to make. So this is one of those recipes you're going to thank your lucky stars for. I use this recipe all the time. It's really, really useful. Um, I use it for regular cutout cookies just on their own. They're really good to decorate with royal icing. I also use them for sandwich cookies. And they're brilliant for ice cream sandwiches because they're not very snappy like most cutout cookies are. They've got a softness to them, so they're brilliant for ones in the freezer. So to start with, I have a bowl here, and that has 220 grams of plain flour. And to that, I'm going to add a quarter of a teaspoon of baking powder and a good generous pinch of salt and I'm going to whisk it together. So that can just be put to one side for later and next I'm going to cream some butter and sugar together. So I have 145 grams of caster sugar here and I'm going to add to that 120 grams of softened unsalted butter. Now I'm going to use a hand whisk for mixing all this stuff together so I've got my trusty hand whisk here and I'm going to beat that together briefly for about 20 or 30 seconds. I don't want to add loads of air, I just want to make sure that the butter and sugar are well mixed. Right, once that's all mixed together, you then need to add some vanilla and an egg. So I've got my lovely vanilla extract here and I'm going to add a teaspoon of that. And a large free range egg. and then using the mixer again, just whisk it all together. So one of the things that makes these cookies so great is that there is no shortage of cocoa powder in them, making them super chocolatey. Um, use the best quality cocoa powder you can find. Don't use um, drinking chocolate or anything crazy like that. Um, try and look for Dutch processed cocoa powder if you can. It'll have much more intense flavour and I have 40 grams of that and I'm going to mix that in as well. And now it's time to go back to our dry mix that we made at the beginning and I'm going to add half of that and then fold it in using a spatula. And the reason I'm folding it is that I don't want to overwork the gluten so that these are really nice and soft cookies. Um, and once it starts coming together, then you can add the second half and do the same thing. So what I'm left with is a dryish but slightly sticky ball of yummy chocolate dough but it's a bit too soft to roll out at the minute, so I'm going to wrap it in cling film and pop it in the fridge for about half an hour, no less than half an hour. Just flatten it out a little bit, that'll make it much easier when you come to roll it. And into the fridge. My cookie dough and I are back after our short break. He's been in the fridge chilling out, I've been having lunch, and he's ready to roll. So I'm just gonna lightly dust the surface with a bit of flour. And I'm gonna also dust my rolling pin with some flour as well, so that doesn't stick. And I'm gonna roll it to about a quarter of an inch thick. And once you've rolled it out to the desired thickness, then it's time to chomp it out using any kind of cookie cutter you like. I'm just going to use round ones to keep it simple today, but you can use shaped ones. These are really, really good. They don't spread too much, so you can do quite good shapes with them. So just flour your cookie cutter first, dip it in a little bit, and then chomp away.
And now I just need to transfer them from here to my baking sheet, which I've got baking paper on. So I'm just going to get rid of the scraps. And I like to use a palette knife just to ease them off, just in case they've stuck to the surface. I don't want to damage them with my big old clumsy fingers. So just ease them off and gently put them onto your baking tray. So if you have scraps like I do, you can re-roll them once. I wouldn't recommend rolling them any more than that, otherwise you'll overwork the gluten and make your cookies all tough and horrible. I'm going to bake these at 175 degrees C for 9 to 10 minutes. They want to be nice and cooked on the outside, but a little bit soft in the middle so that the cookie's lovely and squishy. My cookies are out of the oven and they're completely cool and as you can see they've spread very little which makes these the perfect cookies to use with cookie cutters that are complicated and detailed on like a circle. But um, now it's time to decorate them. You can decorate them however you like if you want to use royal icing to do runouts or make little faces out of them but I am going to dip them in chocolate and cover them in sprinkles because I like doing that and then it makes them extra chocolatey. So I have about 150 grams of melted chocolate here. I'm going to dip them one by one, just halfway, and then sprinkle them. So that's my recipe for the very best chocolate cutout cookies you're ever going to need to make. So let's give them a try. <laughs> These sprinkles are really crunchy. <laughs> but that is one of the most intensely chocolatey cookies that I've ever made, especially since I've dipped it in extra chocolate. That is delicious. I hope you give it a go. I hope it becomes one of your favorites like it is mine. And if you do make these, then why don't you take a picture and put it on Instagram and tag me and I'll be sure to have a look. In the meantime, I'll be back next week. Don't forget you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on the link at the end and I'll see you next week with another recipe. Bye. Mm.